right, everybody, welcome to the Live with Search Engine Land. I'm Barry Schwartz. I'm an editor at Search Engine Land, and we have an amazing session for you today. The topic is what's new with the Bing Webmaster Guidelines. Um, last month, Bing updated its Webmaster Guidelines. Um, and in this live with Search Engine Land, we're gonna be talking directly with the individuals who are responsible for making every single change in those guidelines, uh, every single typo, any single, no, I'm just joking. It's, it's gonna be a fun talk. So um, I like to you know, thank our guests for being here. Our guests are Christy Olson, the head of evangelism at Microsoft and for Bruce Cannell, the principal program manager at Bing Microsoft. Um, so I would like uh, to first start off by just reminding everybody that you could go ahead and first, uh, any questions you might have, feel free to ask those questions in the chat. If you are not muted, um, please make sure to uh, mute yourself. Um, and you could um, just make sure to stay muted during the call, except for our speakers. Uh, maybe at the end of the call, we can unmute and ask whatever we want um, during at, at the end of the, the session. Uh, so before we start, I was hoping that um, uh, Chris, you could actually go ahead and just introduce yourself and tell us what you do, what, you know, your hobbies, um, rate your room. I'm just trying. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I am Christy Olson, head of evangelism for search within uh, Microsoft Advertising and Bing. I partner with Fabrice pretty regularly on. Um, the external communications for Webmaster Tools and talking with him and helping giving some input and connections with uh, the experts in the, the search community space for when people have questions, issues, and requests for what they want next. Um, hobbies, I have two small children, so it involves things like sleeping, running in circles around my living room, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Nothing too exciting right now because we've been home and ready to go crazy for the last few months. And I think my room is nice. Uh, we were talking about rate my room earlier. So it's a nice setting, but could use a little more light. Other than that, I think we're good. Awesome. Um, and Fabrice, could you please introduce yourself? Sure. Um, Fabrice Canel, 23 years at Microsoft, um, forever in search engine. And I'm really managing the web data platform the team that is in charge of discovering the internet content, selecting the best content on the web, uh, fetching it, crawling it, uh, processing it. And so if your site is missing from me, this is, uh, this is my fault. <laughs> and I've got to make sure that uh, I'm annexing all your good quality content and miss uh, none of that. And uh, I am also overseeing the Bing Webmaster tool and I've been busy these days. Awesome. And how long have you been working with on the Microsoft Bing team directly? Oh, since day one, since MSN Search, Live Search, and uh, yeah. Also, oh, you've seen all the different branding changes and so oh, forth. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so you're going to stick with Bing or are you going to change the name to something else? Oh, Bing, Bing, we love Bing. <laughs> we love Bing, okay. Yeah. It's, it's catchy. All right, first, congratulations on the new Bing Webmaster tools. It's amazing. I went through it in pretty detail, not in immense detail, but in, the, in enough detail. And it's a really, you did an amazing job. So congratulations on that launch. And I'm Thank looking you. forward to all the new things that are coming out in the upcoming weeks or days. Yeah, or thank minutes. you so much. A lot of good work done by the team, and hopefully this is a, we are here to help our webmasters to get their content index and to guide them to uh, issues they may have on their site. So we do believe that this is a, a more than a release, this is really a foundation blocks uh, that will help us moving forward. This is from a technology standpoint, we can ship uh, new things quite easily on this new tool. It's not really about shipping more things. This is all, this is all about guiding the customer, the webmaster, uh, to what really matter on the site. So we went from a very large uh, site, webmaster tool having 47, <laughs> items in the navigation, which was crazy. This was really for geeks, for advanced users, to something that is uh, simpler to use, that is really guiding not only uh, newbies, but also experts to really what truly matter on the, on the site. Yeah, on issues. No longer need a silver light to, right? Silver light, that was what the old version, the yeah. original version was running. Yeah, yeah. So. But um, any, it's, it's just really, it's a great, it's a great job there. I'm looking forward to the new things that are coming out with it. I think you started over a year ago on this process. Um, yeah, we started uh, the first release. We started to migrate in February. Um, and so in kind of uh, six months, we migrated 
everything. In fact, we didn't migrate it everything because we didn't want to have tools that are really not used or we believe useless, and we want to collapse tool together. So again, we have kind of aggregated a lot of tools uh, to make it easier for webmasters to really understand uh, the top issues. Awesome. And for those listening, this is not the main topic we're talking about, but Bing just recently this week pushed out the new Bing Webmaster tool. So if you try to go to the old one, it will redirect you using, I think, a 301 redirect um, to the new Bing Webmaster tools. Um, but you still can access the old one for about a month or so. Um, but I definitely recommend you take a deep dive into it. It's really, really great stuff. So thank you for uh, producing that. All right. So let's go into the topic um, that we've been working on. Uh, uh, that's you know, the original topic is about the guidelines, the, the guideline changes. And you wrote a post about a month ago or so about this change. Um, I believe also that was something you've been working on for about a year uh, as well. Meaning, I know your colleagues, um, Frederick, um, went ahead and posted, what would you like to see in the new guidelines? What are we missing and so forth? So and that was about a year ago. So I assume you've been working on this change for about a year or has it been longer? Yeah, this has been uh, kind of a year where you obviously don't want to change the guidelines every week or every month. So when you change the guidelines, this is you really want to make sure that you are capturing uh, what truly matters and you want to communicate to make sure that, uh, okay, people can read, can think about what they need to plan uh, to make sure that they are matching the guidelines. And so this is we, we get kind of a little bit of investment of time uh, to make sure that the guidelines are meaningful and are uh, useful for uh, webmasters. And uh, when, was, when was the last time it was updated prior to this? Time? Ooh, this was six or seven years ago. So again, yeah. it, was, it was kind of a little bit updated, but kind of guidelines are always updated because the internet is changing fast. But again, you don't want to change them too often because you want to kind of stick to something that really, really matters. We will have to adjust them as we go a little bit, obviously, because the internet is changing, but not too much. We don't want to change every day. We change track every day. This is kind of defining the North Star about what matters. And so uh, please have a look and uh, follow and give us feedback. Also, maybe we, we have done um, some sentences and maybe not so clear. So let's, let's review with you and engage with you to refine them if needed. Yeah, and Barry, what I would say on this, a lot of it was also hearing the questions we would get when we speak at conferences and events, when people would ask questions, it gave us really good insight as to where we need to focus on rewriting the guidelines, being more clear and clarifying based on those questions so that when everyone from the advanced SEOs to the newbies were reading through it, it made sense. It was organized in a way that made it clear to follow what we were looking at, the criteria, the different components. Uh, it, before, it, because we had, there had been some editing done where somebody just added content to the bottom, it didn't flow really well. So a lot of it's also, how do we structure it so it makes more sense as people are reading through it to really understand what we're looking at. But as for Bree said, it's the North Star, the, the core components really haven't shifted and changed it changed that much. Um, there's little tweaks here and there, but it's making it easier to understand across the board. Well, great. That's great. And I, I personally, I wouldn't mind if you updated it every you know day or two. It doesn't, I would enjoy that. It makes for a new story every single day or two, but <laughs> don't do it for me. Um, so, okay, cool. All right. So what's like the process you go through? Like, I mean, no, you haven't done it every day. You haven't done it in a while. So you actually spent a while re Pro, uh, redoing this, but what's the process you went into changing this? Do you have like a dedicated person who was like, all right, you have to do all the research and do it, or was like a kind of a group effort? How do, how do you guys go about that? As Christy was telling, it's, it's all about collecting feedback and uh, feedback from the industry, uh, going to conferences, speaking uh, uh, to webmasters. And it's also about uh, looking at what we call DSAT, mean versus things that are broken, mean that we are missing a specific. Uh, content. We see that we are not able to discover the content. Uh, we think that uh, an URL should be at position one, and we understand why this URL is not at position one. And then this is kind of developing kind of a culture and the knowledge within the team of understanding, okay, what, what we master can do, should do to help us and help themselves to be ranked into position, to have the content discovered. And so it's kind of a culture of uh, collecting information. And so, yes, we were collecting uh, in, uh, in different documents uh, what we should do 
And then this was, okay, we generated these guidelines and we obviously up updated the previous one. Yeah, it's a, it was a, we had one month of very serious conversations and feedback where we, we compiled all the different feedback together and we had some debates of like, do we include this? Will this confuse people in the industry? Will it not confuse them? Will they think that this is more of a factor than it should be? I know I pushed for a couple of things that got removed. I'm like, come on, I really want to write about this. <laughs> I'd like these to be included because it's topics that might've been more near and dear to my heart that are part of the algo, but there are minimal, minimal parts of the algo. So like we had really internally then taking the feedback and having dialogue amongst, I don't know how many people were on that thread, probably like 15 to 20 people going back and forth of, are we putting things, uh, are we including all the right components? Are we going in depth, but not too in depth? Cause it won't, I want to say we had like 20,000 words. Cause uh, when we were rewriting, we literally rewrote the entire HTML section. We're like, okay, actually we don't need that in the guidelines. We can actually link to that in a separate doc and we'll up update the entire help and how to hierarchy um, is going to be another big project, but that's going to take a long time out if you've seen our structure. It's like, what do we need to have in the guidelines? What do we need to help in the help and how to? And how do we make sure that they both really complement each other? So it was, a, it was a meaty, meaty process. Interesting. So for me personally, could you go ahead and name at least one or two of those things that didn't make it in there that you really wanted to get in there on a high abstract level? Now I'm trying to remember because unfortunately having two small children and being off for two weeks, like I can sing Peppa the Pig song. And <laughs> um, <laughs> I think I had a lot more around accessibility that didn't make it in. Um, and it's, and, and I think I, I had an entire section around accessibility that in the end, like, well, it's not, it's best practices, but it's not part of the guidelines necessarily. Um, so I know that some of, some of it made it in, but some of it got pulled just on creating more accessible content. Why? Like we just celebrated the 30 years of the ADA. Um, so I know that got pulled, but I am hoping um, as we go through the help and how-to content, we will probably have a dedicated section on web accessibility and what it takes to sort of meet the WDAC standards. Um, just that that for me is something that's been near and dear to my heart for the last <laughs> year. Okay. Um, I don't know if you remember what else got pulled, but I remember that was the section I was, we had a lot of comments back and forth. Yeah, this was also, uh, Christy was filtering myself from going too deep into specific technical parts. Uh, I mean, you can go forever in sitemaps, in RSS feed and tell, okay, schema and things like this. And now you want Advian to, to keep it uh, high level, to kind of being a direction, a high level guidelines. And we will have blog posts. We will have subsection to really go into the detail of each and everything. Cool. I'm just curious since we're talking about this, is there like one tiny, tiny ranking factor that nobody really talks about? that you find interesting that the SEO community doesn't ask about? Is there like one factor that you might be like, why hasn't the SEO community ever asked about that? I know it's kind of putting you on the spot. Uh, I don't know if either of you have something that comes to mind. I will refer you to the guidelines. <laughs> <laughs> not not asking no, to reveal anything. It might be something no, obvious, like, I don't know, white on white background stuff. I mean, it might be something like, so the beauty, yeah, the beauty of really relevance because I'm involved uh, generating all this uh, feature that uh, relevance is uh, using. Uh, this is um, this is not anymore really uh, if then tree statement. This is not anymore if you have H1 in the page, then you do that. And if there is a, a meta keyword, then you discard things like that. It's not anymore that. This is really about funneling. Uh, tens of thousands of features to the ranker, to the Bing ranker, and it's all about machine learning. So this is all about kind of a magic of machine learning where obviously the engineers can go deep to understand exactly what is happening, but this is things that is evolving on a day-to-day -day basis. So what is the weight today of the title tag versus tomorrow the weight of the title tag. This is really things that are evolving. The machine is evolving on a day-to-day -day basis to understand, okay, as the internet is changing, as the content is changing, as the intent of the customer is changing, this is things that are always evolving. Um, the virus thing trigger that the intent of the customer were different. So certainly the title tag weight has changed value from a few months because due to the virus and the intent were changing. So this is 
we can speak about the title tag, but this is one of the tens of thousands of features that Bing is using. So it's just, we cannot really tell if title tag is important or important at a very, very granular level. Obviously, this is important for caption and, and for anchor, but it's one of the tens of thousands of things that we are leveraging. Right, so I'm not really asking, I mean, you're saying, so title tag is one of the factors. We don't know what it's weighted because machine learning could change it um, at any, any time. And I guess machine learning could change it for every query also. So query X might be differently weighted than query Y, yeah. I assume. Yeah. yeah, semantic intent. It goes back to intent. So I think that's um, that's one of the topics for me that not a lot of people talk about because people still talk about keywords. They don't talk about the intent behind the keywords and how do you create content based on different types of intent? Because um, it's no longer, as Fabrice is saying, a query to a keyword. Um, it, it's not a one-to-one -one ratio. Uh, the other one that I think is interesting that's similar is the idea somewhere between relevance and quality coming together that there was a discussion this morning between Jonah Alderson and Izzy Smith where they were talking about you know there is a large shoe website that went from having a hundred thousand pages but they only had a hundred products down to like a thousand pages and like how much content is enough content how much is not enough content um, I would say I don't think enough companies think about the scaling back as much as they probably should. They create more content, but they don't pull the old out of dated. So they've got two, I, I would say probably too many pages that are not relevant. They're not meeting a user need. They, they're they just there and taking up space. Do you really need that? So I, I would say that's one I don't think we talk about much within the webmaster community is, uh, and we actually did update the guidelines. And for a reason I went back and forth on this, I remember the word was like, have the right amount of content on your site that doesn't mean you have to have a new article every week every month and that you just keep on adding pages and adding pages it's content that adds value to your user base and so right so <laughs> so i mean that's more about the okay I, I get that could you just explain a little bit let's go back to the intent thing could you explain what you mean by intent versus focusing on intent versus focusing on keywords yes you so I, yeah as an example uh, if you query for um, Facebook, you won't really even, the most user want to go to the facebook.com uh, homepage. This is the right. intent, this is the navigation item. If you want to query for uh, uh, who is Barry Schwartz, okay, maybe you want to go to your profile pages, that is one of the profile pages. Um, if you want to go to a movie, that's an interesting question this day because you may, <laughs> there is no movie theater. So. Maybe in this case, you don't want to redirect customer to the movie theater because there is no movie yet, uh, fully soon, but you want to redirect customer to Netflix and Amazon and other places where you can uh, watch movies. So it's all about really understanding, and this can be about uh, other type of intent. Is coffee is good for you? And this is an interesting question because uh, what do you want? Do you want a yes or a no answer? <laughs> and often it's, there is different point of view on the internet and often this is also to present a different point of view. So when the query is coming, the first thing we do is really first parse the query to understand the terms in the query, but really understand the intent, what customers are looking for when they type this query. And then we can uh, try to find uh, the best set of content and provide the best experience within uh, Bing.com. And Barry, so the example of that it goes back to like as we're talking the multi-perspective answers. And I know when we released them, gosh, the the years all blur together. I think that was two years ago, or maybe it was three that the multi-perspective yeah. answers we started adding that into the top of the page. Where like the example is is coffee good for you? Is it bad for you? Where it's it was mind-boggling to a handful of people that you could rank for the complete opposite of what your content was related to because we're giving both sides of a story. So if you're asking like, how much wine is too much wine? <laughs> like there's two sides of that question. So some people might say wine is like, any wine is too much. Some people might say it's not. So it, it's an interesting because the intent sometimes is as Fabri said, like movies. It's the movies that are in theaters now. It's movies, where do you go to watch them? It's movies in terms of like the, streaming services since theaters in i would say most states are probably closed i don't know if anywhere is open at this point not here but 
so in, intent shifts and changes, but also the intent is I've still heard SEOs talking and some of the, the content producers talking about like you create articles for kid versus kids versus children. I'm like, no, no, that, that goes away with how they're using vectors um, to understand relationships between words. We understand that kid, kids, and children are similar to each other. You don't have to create separate content for each uh, canonical or stimming version of a word and similar terms, unless it shifts the meaning of the word. Um, okay. Substantially. I think that's a good, so I'm trying to understand what you were talking all the time. How's in, what you're saying about intent different than keywords because the keywords you use to explain the different intent matters. I wasn't thinking about like kid versus kids versus children. I wasn't thinking that way. That's obviously just thinking about keywords um, and then yeah. stuffing as many keywords as you can. But I guess, can I go to the movies now or how do I watch a movie now are different intents. Um, okay, got it. Um, all right, so the next question I wanted to ask you was, I ran back to the guidelines. Um, so we kind of talked a little bit about, you know, do you wish something was added that was not added or something that should have been added. We kind of discussed, you spent a lot of time discussing that. Um, do you want to point out or either you want to point out any specific change in the document that you think is probably one of the more important changes or additions in those in that document that you think, oh, SEOs or people listening to this now really need to worry about or think about? So I think, I think I, I will take um, looking at the guidelines right now as I speak. And I think it's, it's all about at the end guiding to what truly matter in terms of things people have to think about. SEO is a wide space. You can do, you can do everything. And it's all about at the end what's really matter. And we kind of split this guidelines into parts. This is first, it's about getting your content indexed, getting your content discovered, helping us to fetch it, helping us to understand your content. It's all about my part. It's all about, okay, I need to get the internet content. I cannot miss one good relevant document on the internet. I've got to download them. I've got to process them. And really you can help us uh, to get to that. And after it's helping to understand the content, but this is via schema, via information that you can put in the page. Um, and all this, uh, this part matter. And so, uh, Christy, do you have another? Yes. Um, so I think on there, uh, areas that we did, I'm trying to think on the what we updated, because I'm, I'm also thinking the question slightly different way, because I know one of the sections we asked about, like, should we expand it is understand CSS and JavaScript. And I'm trying to remember how much of that stayed versus how much we're pulling, because I can't tell you how many times we've gotten so many questions on the JavaScript side. Uh, I know Fabrice and I have been cornered. There's one or two people that corner us at every single event to ask us updates on that end. <laughs> right. You know. So, yeah, I, I, yeah. So I was thinking like you might say, you know, the biggest change is probably this evergreen thing bot type of thing. It's a different way of, you know, indexing stuff. But like you made so many changes to the document over the past, uh, you know, in this time, there was so many big changes that I think it's probably hard to say one thing. So sorry for putting you in the spot there. Uh, well, so. Let's, you're right. It's like the, uh, and I'm trying to think, uh, it was in there before, but it might have been buried because we did talk, we did have an update. Like we haven't rewritten the entire guidelines, but when we did release the um, URL submission API, we did update it. So to me, that one wasn't net new because that was in there previously. It was just buried in an obscure location that you might not have been able to find. <laughs> right. Interesting. And just for everybody watching, feel free to use the chat to ask questions. Um, but, you know, there's, We'll hopefully we'll get to your questions at the end. So one of the more interesting things in this document, outside of all the technical stuff and guideline stuff, is around ranking factors. You guys published, you know, a whole section just on ranking factors, which I felt to be uh, very interesting because um, Google kind of doesn't do that. Um, so I kind of want to go through them one by one and you know, you know, spit out exactly what SEO should care about if it's if it's domain authority versus, I'm just joking. Um, inside, uh, and a percentage behind it, like 20% domain authority, no. Yes, and if you could put a dashboard as the weights change um, in real time, like behind you and some neon sign, that'd be great. Um, and just, again, maybe a bad joke. All right, so the first section is relevance. And I was hoping that one of you could maybe like define what you consider to be relevance. 
That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have like two two days to discuss it? <laughs> yeah, this is um, this is a this is this is at the end is um, we care about satisfying uh, the customer, satisfying the big customer, and uh, customer have um, a really different point of view, different uh, ways of thinking. But I think there is some kind of consensus when there is a query again Facebook. You want to go to facebook.com. It's kind of okay. Most people on the internet want to see this happening. And okay, so we will judge if we are good or not by judging such kind of query, uh, judging ourselves, but also obviously going to external judges that will tell us, oh, that makes sense. Yeah, this is good. I query Facebook and this is my intent. I want to go to facebook.com. And uh, we will have also a lot of uh, online metrics, what we call online metrics, where we judge if customers are liking uh, the clicks and do action on the page, on the search result page. That is kind of, we believe, are uh, satisfactory for uh, their query. If you query for um, what is the time in uh, New York, we may display directly the time. And there is potentially no click because we display the time directly. And, but we still look at what's happening on the page and we see that customer may be happy because they may see, uh, they may do another query that is not related to time, meaning that we have satisfied their intent again to know the time in New York. And then there is obviously far more complex query where we will uh, query for what Barry was doing last year in uh, SMX West, what Barry uh, uh, wrote about SMX West in last year. And this is cases where first there is a, potentially a lot of documents on the internet that refer that, and there is potentially people were expecting oh, something that is really specific about what you said or what you wrote in SMX West last year. So this is where uh, the quality of results may be different based on user and intent. And we will also look at what uh, they were uh, query before and after to see if this is again satisfying their intent. And this is also, again, as we said, looking at online metrics or uh, going to external judges for sample set of queries to see if this is satisfying, if we believe this is satisfying, satisfying uh, the set of customer and the set of queries. And the more complex the query are, the more Harder, this is obviously uh, to define if this is good or not good, and if this is expected. There is a lot of Christy also maybe in the world, but me, this is all about my Christy, the one in the chat. And so this is uh, when I search for Christy also, I may not so be interested by another Christy also. No, no, I want this Christy also. So as we go to the tell, it's a little, it's obviously more challenging to find uh, good quality results uh, for each and every search engine. And this is where uh, there is a lot of work needed to really understand what customers want and what's their intent. And uh, something that is often more what we call tell, the tell of the internet, not the top of the internet, and something that is more often personal. Got it. Uh, Christy, you're muted. Sorry, had my child in the background for a second. Um, it's also what Fabrice said is where these aren't standalone, they all work together. So like, as he was talking about relevance, we also brought in that user engager, engagement metric of how, like, did they click? To how long did they stay on that site? Did they come back? Did they change the query? Did they change the query in a very meaningful way? Or is it just a tweak where they changed wording, trying to see if they can, manipulate or alter the results to be more specific to what they're looking for. So each of these components isn't a standalone. They all really do work together. Um, it, you can't look at it as a individual one. So I just want to call that out for the webmasters as you're thinking about this and SEOs, they all work together. You can't have quality if you don't have relevance. You can't have user engagement if you don't have quality. Credibility is important. If it's really old, something old about movies, as Fabrice is saying, like, great, you can show me all the movies that are in theaters a year ago, but today, like I, it's not relevant it's not fresh so it's so the, the relevancy part i would say probably doesn't really stem from what's on a person's website i mean what's on a person's website is on a person's website that's not changing at the second of the query but the relevance in my perspective is what is the key we're talking about and what is the intent that you want to drive um, in terms of the results so yeah is a page relevant or not that depends on the content you can't make your page more relevant 
um, about a topic if you don't understand the intent that you're trying to optimize for. Not that you really could optimize for intent, but that's another topic, I guess. Um, but let's, since you've been mentioning a lot of the user engagement stuff, I'm going to skip to that section. Um, and then we'll go back to the other sections later. So again, I found it pretty amazing that you guys spoke about user engagement metrics, uh, mostly because, as you know, the other search engine um, doesn't, for, for years, have been saying we don't use these user engagement metrics. They don't use click through rate. They don't use clicks in the search results. They don't use pogo sticking. And they don't use data that they get from, let's say, Search Console or, in your case, Webmaster Tools or analytics data for rankings. And it even came up today, comes up every single day. Does Google use data from Chrome, analytics? Um, does Google look at pogo sticking from the search results back and forth directly in feeding it back to the algorithm? They do in a, in a sense that they look at it in terms of um, are our algorithms working? And they'll look at that data overall and say, can we have to make improvements to our algorithm? You guys are basically saying that you do feed it directly into the algorithm. If pages are getting higher clicks on it, clicks, people are, are is it a direct signal or not? those user engagement metrics? We do what is the best for the customer. If we found that this is very useful data and we believe this is useful data for uh, the ranker, why not using this data? What's preventing, uh, this is people are searching, providing insights on what they are looking for. Uh, we do believe that this is useful data that is helping us uh, to retrieve again, to attempt retrieving the best content, satisfying customer, retrieving the best content on the internet. And like the way to look at it, Barry, like when Fabrice and I and Frederick and I talk about this, you can have an amazing page that ranks really well, but if users spend a second on the page or two seconds and they click back, there's something wrong with it. Is it a load issue? Is there a 500 issue? Something happening because if it doesn't matter, the content's amazing. If users aren't staying on that site, maybe they've put a pop-up in. There's something going on there that is a signal that regardless of what content is on the page, regardless of showing, the users are saying, it does not add value back to me. Just but not always. And sometimes if you click over to a page, you get the answer right away within a second. The answer is no. They go back. Maybe they want to see other answers. I mean, well, it doesn't then, necessarily mean it's bad if they click back. True, but also we can look at then, that's when you tie that in with, did they then adjust the query to something slightly different or did they then right. click on another result? So it's, it goes back to like being holistic, tying multiple things together. So if you Some, spend very little time on page, you click back, you click on another result, click back. Like, so how they all come together really is, it's more of a so holistic Just to be picture. clear, forget about the weights. Um, you may or may not weigh these things important or not, but you are using user engagement metrics directly funneling it back into the algorithm for one of the weights uh, for one one of the factors they are factors how much they're weighted is not necessarily going to be disclosed in this conversation but they are click through rate pogo sticking um are people engaging are they changing the queries that's all direct influencer influences into the actual what's going to be how well that page might rank in the future in bing is that correct yeah. yes correct okay. but it's uh, again this is machine learning Yes. And things are evolving on a daily basis. So there is, uh, and this is, as you spoke about intent. So Facebook, yeah, facebook.com. <laughs> and this is really, uh, this cannot change. This is not because you will do a beautiful page with a million words with Facebook on it, but right. we will place it at position one. And it's not because you will click on it, that it will be position one. No, it is all about, you know. <laughs> No, this is all about. Uh, this is all really about understanding if it's satisfying uh, all all customer. Right. So, what is that? I mean, first of all, I have a question. So, how many people go to Bing and actually just search for Bing to find Bing? Is that a, a nice query? Do people actually click on like search for Bing to get to Bing? Because I heard like it's one of the top queries and. Some sites is like Google said, one of their top queries is somebody searching for Google just to go to Google. And when like probably like 20 years ago, I went to a client. And what they did was they went to Google's homepage and said, I'm going to bring up Google. And they typed in Google to bring up Google. Does that happen a lot? And just, a, I, I don't, I don't have a data. No. Yeah, I don't. Right. Uh, I, what I can answer on that one, Barry, is when I ran paid search for Bing, one of our top keywords was goggle. <laughs> and you can take the intent of what goggle meant, but it was right. a lot of people then came into the Bing homepage. And that was a decade ago, though, when we first launched. But I haven't seen, when I was running paid search, we didn't have as much on the going into Bing and searching for Bing side. Right, and when I type in search engine to Bing, I mean, Bing doesn't even rank itself. I don't see it on the first page. 
which is always that question, why not? But uh, I guess they're there already, so they know where they're where they're going. Um, oh, that's a good question because we don't uh, we are fair. We don't promote our own um, properties. Ah, so going back to the congressional hearing from two days ago, got it. Yeah, so but it also, <laughs> but it's also that that was actually an update on the how Bing rates your content. That actually is one of the biggest updates in the guidelines is specifying out like, hey, we do not we do, do not really promote Microsoft or our own content above anybody else. We are required to rank just the same way anyone else would. So like if somebody within Microsoft comes to us and says, I want to be number one, we're like, great, here is a document about how to rank an SEO. Yeah, this is called, <laughs> this is called the Bing Webmaster Guidelines. <laughs> so do you actually blacklist Bing from ranking for search engine in Bing? No, nope. no, no, okay, no, no. all right, cool. Let's move on. Um, so we have, we have to, Christy, we have to do some work on SEO on our Bing home page. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's because it's going to be considered thin content. We don't have much on there. We have the image yeah. that changes every day. Yeah. And other than that, we've got the image, we've got the toolbar, and there's not yeah. a lot on there to rank. We don't even think mm -hmm. we say search engine on the page, if I remember correct. Mm -hmm. Interesting. All right, so get that, get that going. All right, so let's move on to the quality and credibility section, if possible. All right, so you mentioned a bunch of things. Again, a lot of these things Google says they do not use, um, such as author reputation. Let's, let's focus a little bit on author reputation. Again, who cares how much they're weighted? I know everything goes into one big pot and machine learning and is all driving, you know, do you, do you care about these or not for a specific query? Um, so you're able to under, understand that, for example, Barry Schwartz wrote an article on search engine land versus search engine roundtable versus something on a I don't know, Barry Schwartz writing an article on a completely different website. You're able to define that Barry Schwartz across multiple websites? We are able to really, the, the goal is really to understand uh, if the content is credible, if it is, um, if it is copy content, if it is content that is, uh, that is really trustable, that is good, again, satisfying the customer with high quality content. Uh, this can be, it can be for uh, if you, there is again different intent, different point of view. I will take the example of coffee. <laughs> if you search for coffee a grinder, you may want most customers certainly in the United States want the basic coffee grinder that is um, I don't know twenty five dollar in a shop, and that's it. This is good. They are they are satisfied by this, but the professional or the uh, people that really love coffee are not interested by the cheap coffee grinder. They won't really be expert things that will uh, grind the coffee in a special way and so on. And for this, this customer, they really want to get the expert answer from specific uh, individuals in the US that are writing high quality blogs, high quality information that are high quality reviews. And then this is what they really matter is having knowledge and understanding that the people who wrote this, this content is trustable. It's high quality. So coming back to you, Barry, obviously you are uh, one of the top, if not the top, on search engine. And when we search search engine, yeah, we may be more interested by your articles, by some of those people that do some random SEO comments about SEO or, um, or ranking. They said, you become the authority. We believe that we know and we will know even more moving forward that you are the celebrity uh, knowledgeable on search engine. And so we will promote your content because you write high quality documents. But we probably wouldn't rank you for COVID. Yep. I get that. So <laughs> I, I, that I understand. But again, so you know, if Barry Schwartz, I write an article on something about Bing, webmaster tools. I write a search and search and round table, fine. Those sites are quality. Forget they probably rank on their own right. But if I go ahead and say, you know what, I'm gonna put up a page on another website that I do not own that might have a news, let's say I write on The Verge for I do a guest post on The Verge about Bing. Does Bing know that Barry Schwartz is writing that article on, on The Verge? Oh, that's, uh, we may not know at start because you may have another Barry Schwartz. So yeah, there's lots of Barry Schwartz, right? Yeah, there's lots of Barry Schwartz. And so this is uh, little by little, we may learn that you are uh, posting also there and uh, trust you and think, oh, this is the same person. Got it. 
Okay, um, site reputation. Um, so those are one of the, obviously I think, what do you use for site reputation? Is it is about, you know, obviously it's about relevance. So, you know, search engine land is probably reputable about writing about search engines. Um, but there is a, is there like some type of level of this domain name has these amount of links and has a certain authority based off of links? Yeah, again, I cannot disclose techniques because plus if I disclose one or 10 or 50, this will be just a small subset of all the features we are using. Okay. And this, again, machine learning crazy, this is, uh, uh, um, my team is generating thousands of features. And then this is, we look at what is the best. But to answer your question is an uh, interesting question. Uh, let's take the example of the virus today. And uh, okay, if you type uh, COVID-19 or things like that, what, what matter? Is it Wikipedia? Because Wikipedia has somehow some interesting uh, content on each and everything. Okay, it's an encyclopedia. Or are you more interested uh, by, uh, by WebMD or some government sites that provide the latest on this thing? Or are you interested by a document uh, that you may post on COVID-19 and you did uh, in search engine land? And at the end, it's really about mapping and understanding that, okay, this website is kind of a, an authority for that domain, for this uh, specific domain. And it's all about understanding that um, authority means there is very trustable content there that we can use for uh, to link customer and satisfy the intent of a customer. And so, a lot of techniques in play to really understand and classify internet content, internet domains, internet stores, folders, and so on, and associate. Okay, this is reputable on specific topic. Okay. Um, another section in the quality and credibility section is completeness of content. Content. So, which is, which is interesting. Let's kind of like circle around. So when Barry Schwartz writes about a topic on search, on search and round table, I tend to make it short. I don't go through all the history. I'm not going to go in and say, you know, this is what happened then. This is what, when I write it on search engine land, I make it longer uh, because I know the people reading search and round table are probably um, somewhat more expert level um, in my opinion. And they tend to follow my stuff on a daily basis where search engine land is much probably a higher level, um, not, not so in the weeds when it comes to search engines. How important is it for me to go ahead and, and head and if I want my site content, is completeness required or is the user? Sorry? Uh, no, I was curious. Can I take this one? So, because um, I made a, I made a case on this on the completeness of content. You yeah. don't have to have the history of everything on a single page. Um, where I made the case for this is we have there's so many websites and this falls in a couple different areas where you say the you won't believe the amazing change between Mary Kate and Ashley and Full House versus today. And it's a it's an article that every page is just links everywhere or ads everywhere. And it's instead of showing like the before and after photo, you have to go through 75 pictures to get there. It's so like, it is not complete content. You have to literally go through 75 different pages. So that would be considered not complete in my mind. Um, it's where I was thinking, like it's the case I made around completeness of content that if if you're saying you won't believe this thing, when maybe that's, kind of, that's also the issue with that the, uh, it, it's the, um, uh, I can't think of the word right now. I haven't slept enough. Um, where where it's over exciting, um, but it, just making sure that you have an article that's a full article. If you're talking about a topic, that you don't just say one word or a sentence or a high uh, the H1 tag, but that you actually are then completing that thought. You complete the answer, so that it's, again going back to the quality. It's useful and relevant based on the query and to the user set, so they don't have to click through 40 pages to get the answer. Um, what is this? What does it mean by transparency of authorship? Like, do you want every piece of content has to have an author? No, not every piece has to have an author. Um, part of the transparency, and Fabrice can come in on here as well, was the uh, understanding: is this written by a person? Is it a corporate? Is it an entity? Just uh, because there's content that gets scraped and republished, so. Uh, for me on the transparency side was understanding who like is there an actual author or a person 
like I write on the Microsoft advertising blog and that gets associated with me, but sometimes I write for Microsoft advertising where it's not necessarily me as Christy talking about a topic. So being able to say like, who did someone write this or is this on behalf of a brand or a subject? Um, that's how I put in the transparency, but Fabrice, do you have more? Yeah, yeah I think it's, it's useful to refer uh, you yourself um, as a video individual that is writing a specific article uh, to know more about you. Again, very short, if you start posting on specific website, it's good to associate, to help us to associate yourself to you and not another Barry Schwartz. Okay. So basically, if you're, they should have a bio in some, somewhere on the site. Yes. Um, so you guys can understand it. Here's some interesting topics. So, so you wrote in, in this document also about you might demote name calling, offensive statements, like negativity on the web. Um, so if somebody writes an article that is offensive to somebody or some topic or is putting somebody like shaming somebody, that would be, what if somebody's searching for that? Like somebody's looking for Barry Schwartz has a weird haircut, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> well, we just say yes. No, just kidding. Yes. <laughs> so can no. you expand on what that means? Um, so I think it's, so there are different things we do uh, in this area. I, Christy, can you answer or should we go yeah, this I'm, trying to, I'm trying to remember because we, we went back and forth with our legal team on this specific worded verbiage a lot of what we can say or not say on this. But um, one of the cases that was made to our legal team on why we wanted to include this is we don't want to rank content that is, uh, I put it back to, we, we participated in something called the Trust Project. Um, I'm trying to remember when we released that a couple of years ago, like, is it a true statement or is it just derogatory? Am I saying horrible things about somebody that are unsubstantiated claims? Is there any truth or backing behind it? Um, part of this goes back to the idea of getting, it's somewhere, but somewhere around the making sure the content that is showing on the internet that it goes back to the, you know who the author is, are they a trustworthy source, yes or no, or a quality source? Um, are you citing websites that are known to have false information or false data? Um, it's sort of that all coming together into a factor of, you know, we can say that I, I held a party and it was the biggest party in the world, <laughs> But if you see my living room, could I really hold the biggest party in the world in my living room? So that's probably a bad example, but it's something along those lines of, can you trust it? If I am saying terrible things or derogatory statements, is there backing behind it? Is there not? Um, can you prove it. it? All right. And I guess the way you would know that is if there's other documents in the web kind of also prove, or saying the same thing. I think yeah. you're, if, I think where it also comes in, uh, it was in here, I'm trying to remember where we have it. Um, so uh, the level of discourse, for example, an article citations and references to data sources. So it goes back to that. So if you're making a statement, whether it's positive or negative, do you have data to back it up? Is it a trustworthy data source? Do you provide those links? Um, a great example of this is actually, could, could come under quality and credibility. Um, I believe I am still considered the reference point for, um, uh, there's a voice search quote that somehow is based off of me from, I can't remember what exactly it was, where it was, I pulled it from an SEL article, but the, the actual citation got pulled from the SEL article. It was like Greg Sterling 2010 wrote something. I quoted that, but that link got pulled. So now I am the source of the quote. <laughs> And we've right. tried to go back, like, it's not derogatory, but it probably needs to get demoted because we actually don't have the source of that data set anymore. And we tried to pull it and it couldn't happen. So like, are you having a um, quality? Do you have the citations and references to data? Can you actually access it and show that, yes, this is correct versus not correct? Um, it's one, um, it, it was something I quoted about Comscore and voice search uh, based on an article I'd read. <laughs> And then everything got pulled, and now I am the source of truth for the quote. <laughs> okay, um, I did have some user questions around quality um, before the call. Um, I'm not sure if he wants me to mention his name. Who asked this? But basically, are some sites not allowed to rank based on them not reaching a certain expertise level? Like if they're not meeting a benchmark, do those could those sites not rank for a topic? Uh, it says that we rank everything. 
uh, everybody has a chance. Mm -hmm. But obviously, again, for Facebook, uh, you won't be at position one period, uh, at least for now. And so this is uh, everybody has a chance on each and every content. And uh, maybe at the end, you will be at top position because maybe you will develop an audience. Maybe uh, people will think it's highly relevant. Um, but there is no such kind of filter um, yeah, on, the, on anything. Got it. Um, and then another question kind of related to that is, do you take into account quality when determining even if you should bother indexing something? Like, is it worth the time for us to index this page? Is there yeah. a certain quality metric for that? 100. I mean, I will not index that link. <laughs> Uh, for instance, I will not index junk content, I mean if this is a complete empty page, if this is a page with really kind of a complete broken experience, JavaScript error thing, whatever this is, uh, I will not index this content. And there is a, um, also content that uh, we do not want to index on the internet uh, because it's spammy. <laughs> and uh, so yes, we will obviously uh, protect ourselves and protect the user. Uh, by not linking, trying to avoid linking, obviously, to malicious sites and so on. And that goes into the final section of the Webmaster Guidelines, very things to avoid. So when sites are, have substantial amounts of the things to avoid, they could potentially get demoted or not indexed. Right, right. And you, and you guys have been pretty transparent about those demotions, which I appreciate. Um, I know, Fabrice, you've spoken on many, many panels at XMX and other conferences around penalties and demotions and so forth. And I appreciate that transparency. Um, another thing in the, in the guidelines of freshness, um, I guess it only applies to content like pages that would need freshness, meaning um, like your quality readers, your webmaster guidelines were so out of date that you never ranked them well until now because they just weren't up to date. And I'm just joking, um, hopefully a bad joke. But in terms of freshness, I mean, I assume that's talking about news content. It's it's about um, yeah news content is obviously a good example where uh, you want uh, the latest and the brightest of uh, for each and everything that is happening in the world. But it's really based on the intent. Again, if it's just a navigational query, you want to navigate, you want to have a navigation to the site. If it is something that is uh, is coffee is good for you. Uh, maybe you want the latest uh, latest things. You may not want the ten years ago research. Is hydrochloric stuff uh, good for you? Uh, there is different things on the internet, and you may want the latest research, not the research from five years ago. Again, so a lot of based on query classification, we will know if this is more recent or um, recent content. And in this case, yes, we will promote uh, fresh content because we do not want to have a latest, uh, yeah, story. And I guess machine learning comes into play there as well, obviously, because yep. you have to figure that out pretty quickly, especially around trending topics like COVID and so forth. Um, location obviously is important based on the type of intent as well. Do you guys use hreflang? Yes, we do that uh, to uh, we will we will have discussions certainly over the following year on uh, how to help webmasters uh, localize content. This is an interesting topic where I do, I do believe search engines have to improve um, their uh, story. It's uh, today this is really fuzzy. The challenge with HFRF long is that this can of multiply the number of URLs on the internet. And we do believe there is a story related to collapsing and guiding to specific uh, to specific pages that is really kind of international in nature or really language specific. Um, we don't, for Wikipedia is a good example where we have an English version of Wikipedia and we don't really need a cloud version that will be ENGB and ENNZ and so on and so on. We have, we really enjoy an English version of Wikipedia. And so for large library of content, we don't need really to duplicate the content all over the place. And it can be also the case for shopping sites and lots of sites where it's certainly preferable for large sites to have only, um, an, a pair language page instead of having a pair language and country or region page. But I, I think it's an area that is um, where we can help, I mean, being and uh, working certainly with other search engines to come up uh, with something that will help um, the internet to have less content on the internet, less duplicate content on the internet. 
Interesting. So you don't think HRF Lang is a good solution on some we level? Do, we do believe uh, it's a good solution where you have unique content, let's say marketing pages or home pages. But when okay. you have big library of content, millions of pages, is it really useful to duplicate the same content into the same, exactly the same English content, the same French, Japanese, and so on content in all this market? Maybe not. So there is something that we can certainly think through to help the world to minimize the number of URL outputted and to reduce global warming. Interesting. Looking forward to, uh, that's, I was looking forward to uh, seeing what you guys come up with there. It sounds like an interesting yeah. problem. Um, and then you always mention, we don't have much time, but page load time. Um, and I guess that's, a small rank, I would think that's a small ranking factor, but it obviously it's based on machine learning and so forth. And um, if your site barely loads, obviously you're not going to want to rank something that barely loads. Um, is there anything you want to say around that? Or in, in fact, it, it's not true. It's not necessarily true. Um, you may have some very large PDF on the internet that takes a while to load, but it's very uh, very good article. Obviously, the, but this is the search engine or and you see even more the customer will prefer to have a lightning fast experience. You click the link, you get immediately your content. So from the end user standpoint, it's obviously better to have a page that is really loading fast. But sometimes, again, some pages are, takes a while to load, but it's so good content. Sometimes it's, it's really good deep content. And it's, it's okay, it's okay. We will still link to that because again, we satisfy the customer by linking to this experience. So fast is obviously better, do fast, please, uh, for your customer and for support engine. Uh, but also sometimes it's okay. Don't over optimize on, on uh, your SEO budget on getting the site fast. Often there is other problem to fix on your site. Okay. Um, the last thing I want to discuss was this rel sponsored UGC no follow. I know it was a little, I had a little confusion around when I wrote this up that um, basically you're not really using sponsored UGC right now. From what I understand, that you're looking into it, um, and if enough people, enough websites, enough web pages use it, then you might go ahead and you reserve the right to use that in the future. Is that correct? Is that a correct understanding? Um, it's. Yeah, it is also uh, this information is sent to our machine learning stack. So we right. are already consuming that. And then certainly we will tweak it and optimize it uh, based on our finding and based on adoption. Again, if adoption is really low, uh, then this is not at all a ranking factor. And as adoption is kicking off, and it is, uh, then we will, uh, we will optimize it and leverage it even more in the ranking stack. Yeah. So, I mean, just to be clear, if I use rel sponsored on a sponsor link on my blog, will you go ahead and look at, the, not count that link um, as it's, passing it's not, the link? Yeah, it's, it's not really about passing. It's really, uh, so first, people are doing a lot of mistakes all yes. the time. And so this is really about uh, understanding if it's really truly matter and if this is helping us on the specific sites, because often it's a template and this is the whole site has this thing, and to trust if this is useful or not useful for the destination site. Uh, we know sponsors, so we, um, yeah, this is, we may trust or not trust this information based on sites. It's not a global setting at all. It's really understanding the kind of the logic of a site and what this link add value or not add value uh, um, for the end customer at the end of the day, for the big customer. We, all our work is to satisfy being customer. So this is really optimizing for that. Great. Okay. I mean, that's a good way to end. Again, your whole purpose running Bing is to make sure that the searcher, the Bing customer going to Bing, entering a keyword or whatever it might be, that you're understanding their intent and serving the best possible answer and best top possible web pages uh, to result, to give them the answer that they're looking for. And for SEOs watching this, whatever they could do to ensure that their pieces of content on the web are answering the types of questions that um, they expect to go to that page. That's that's the ultimate, I guess, goal of an SEO. Make sure your pages are answering the questions that people are searching for uh, related to that page topic, I guess. Yes. Yep. That's it. That's simple. There you go. That's how you get number one rankings on Bing. Um, 
anyway, um, we have like a minute left. Is there anything you guys want to end with? Um, or we pretty much covered it all. I'd say check out the new Webmaster Tools platform if you haven't already done it. It was released, I'm trying to think, was it yesterday, Fabrice? They all... Yeah, we were busy last, last night, uh, one night or two. I didn't sleep so much. So, but, yeah. Yeah, you were up all night. I remember I saw your tweets at like at 4 a.m., 5 a.m., 6 a.m. Eastern time. Anyway. So. We had fun. Cool. Yes, and it, was, it was a good release. I do believe this, is truly, uh, this will truly help uh, everybody. Uh, this is just free tool go to signing and uh, get help, yeah. And if people need anything from you, you are available mostly, uh, you both are pretty active on Twitter. Um, mm -hmm. You also have a very useful support forum, um, a support form where people can submit questions and you read them all and you actually, I think, respond to most of those questions that people ask. Yeah, we, uh, if we answer all questions, uh, yeah, this is a goal to answer 100% of the question and resolve 100% of the problem including telling people, sorry, we don't uh, index your site because you're a spam site. So often we have to tell uh, a story and uh, yeah. And if you want to find that form, just go to Bing and type in Bing's, uh, I guess, webmaster support form and you can uh, submit any questions you want to them. Thank you both for being here doing this. I hope you are guys are both doing well in uh, Seattle, um, right? You're both in Seattle right now, right? Yep. yep. Um, so I hope you guys are doing well, coping well with the stay at home uh, socially distant uh, stuff going on right now. It's been rough, you know, what, four or five months now, right? Since early March. Um, and I uh, hope you and your families are doing well. And uh, I think Brian has a question or he's just waving. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm just, uh, you've renewed my interest, um, both of you, uh, in coming back to Bing's tools and uh, Bing Webmaster tools. Um, I found the conversation fascinating. Um, I mean, I could probably go and ask a half a hundred questions, uh, but the, I mean, Barry's covered quite a lot of stuff and knowing if we can, you know, get access to you and fire a question to you. I have, I represent mainly here in Scotland, lots of small businesses um, who struggle uh, just with the basics. Uh, and there's a few bigger sites that I do deal with, obviously, but I'm very interested in how the smaller website owner tries to compete and get their brand out there and get their specific pages out there. Um, and it, it's, it seems to be a challenge for them. They, you know, they, they, they look at, they think that, I mean, there's a lady who just contacted me thinking that she's going to switch from a, a, a product called Concrete 5 to, to a WordPress with Yoast that she's going to do better because Yoast will tell her all the answers for SEO. No, 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 I don't think that's going to work that's somewhere. A, so that's a good way to end off. Do you, do you think that, Bing has, you know, treats small businesses, small, you know, new players in the, in the space fairly. I, I would say first, the easy answer is read the guidelines, follow the master guidelines. Uh, we yeah, do believe yeah. that uh, this, this will help you. If uh, we are pleased to contact the support, contact myself on Twitter if needed, if you feel you are uh, not, uh, you should be at top position for specific queries. It's, uh, it's always good to review, to speak with you and review your uh, issues and uh, maybe there is something we do wrong. We are not perfect and there is a search engine is a 10 years ago, 10 years in the future, people will say, oh, this was really bad. No, this is way better. And you know, so we are continuously improving the, uh, the system, the stack. And certainly there is things we have to learn. Uh, we look at data ourselves, but we are we are really engaging with you and others to really understand you, uh, listen to you, and uh, see what's broken in your system and try to improve. I, I like Christy's point. So I, I did like Christy's point about not having lots of pages with lots of content. Um, and yet we hear from people saying, you know, you should, to get a, a website fired up, you should maybe write um, three or four blogs a month and keep freshness content coming in. To, to grow the site's popularity. And, and uh, right. you've kind of said that's not really the case. If you've got your core website that you launch with, are you then right. saying you've just got to go through a process to, to try right. and just raise awareness to it? Well, so and I just, I'm, OK, right, right. sorry, are we over time? Because I say what I would say oh, is yeah. uh, the, the key thing is there's, I've because I've done consulting of people saying like, you have to have a new blog post every week to remain relevant. That's not necessarily the case. Now, if you're a brand new site that doesn't have anybody linking to it, that might help you 
get links by reaching new people. Make sure that what you're writing, the content you have is relevant to the user base. Um, you, if it's irrelevant, if you're just publishing for the sake of publishing, it's a waste of resources. And that's where Fabrice and I are getting at is publishing needs to happen if you're answering a question. You need to add the value back. Um, it's not saying that it's good or bad. It goes back to the multi-perspective answers. But if you're not adding value, then that's where I would say you're probably spending more time in areas that you don't need to. Go back to your technical SEO first. Get that fixed. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Okay, thanks, um, thanks everybody. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you all very much. Thanks for everybody watching live. Um, and I will probably be writing this up over the next course of weeks or so. And I appreciate your time um, and have a great weekend. Stay safe and I'll speak to you guys soon. Thank you again.